Well, before we hear the commission uh, recommendation, I would like to suggest one factual correction in the resolution before us. On page 42 of the packet, it says, whereas the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has defunded Yucca Mountain and is now proposing to leave, I don't believe that's factually accurate. So I'd like to propose that we change that language to and and does not now have plans to prevent leaving highly radioactive waste. Well, I just wanted to put that idea out before the public comment. Thank you. Dan Hirsch is a lecturer on nuclear policy at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and the former director of the program on nuclear policy there. And he is also president of the committee to bridge the gap of nuclear policy organization. Uh, uh, so, uh, Mayor Bates and council members, uh, first I want to mention that on Sunday, 73 current and former mayors of Japanese towns were out um, demonstrating uh, for the purpose of getting rid of nuclear power uh, forever in Japan everywhere. Uh, and largely, you'll, you will hear, and, and uh, hopefully, if you have any concerns or questions after Mr. Hurst speaks, you'll be able to maybe address those questions to him. But uh, besides safety concerns, uh, I was, um, I, I didn't know myself that in an extensive study, the Univers Union of Concerned Scientists found that when the more than 30 subsidies awarded this industry, the nuclear industry, are added together, they have often exceeded the average market price of the power produced. In other words, they explain this means that buying power on the open market and giving it away for free would have been less costly than subsidizing the construction and operation of nuclear power plants. These subsidies continue to make the existing nuclear fleet possible. So it, it's unsafe, it's not cost effective, it's not economic, and it's certainly not reliable. Um, and when, when I first uh, wrote the first draft of this resolution, and it, and it went through a number of drafts and, and it took a while to get through the commission, um, my first draft was on the queue of hearing how Dr. Helen Caldicott on KPFA radio saying that we needed to tell Jerry Brown to uh, shut down Diablo Canyon, San Onofre, and to use the National Guard to do so if possible. Um, well, as much as I, I uh, usually want to do whatever Helen Caldicott says, uh, it was pointed out to me that she doesn't know California law necessarily, and, and you can't do that. And I shopped around the state trying to get the best advice for this resolution and um, realized that parts of this resolution are addressed to the federal government because the NRC does have jurisdiction over safety issues and Governor Brown has jurisdiction over economics and reliability and possibly uh, Mr. Hirsch will explain to you that uh, Jerry Brown could make three phone calls um, and give certain people reasons to actually shut, shut the plants down sooner than their licenses would expire and, um, and, and, and that Mr. Hirsch uh, maybe will suggest a change to improve this resolution. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, there are obviously a uh, wide range of views about nuclear power generally, uh, and I'm going to try to focus on the particulars of San Onofre and Diablo, which are currently both experiencing pretty substantial crises. Um, San Onofre, to begin with, I came back, I'm here today after having been down for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission hearings on San Onofre yesterday. And as you know, those reactors, both Unit 2 and 3, were shut down since January. Um, there was a leak, radioactive leak from a steam generator tube in Unit 3. It was then revealed there were hundreds of damaged tubes in Unit 2. These are steam generators that were put in place only one or two years ago at a cost of $671 million to the ratepayers. And they're falling apart. They're supposed to last 40 years. And in a year or two, they now have thousands of the tubes um, experiencing unusual 
uh, degradation. It is unclear whether those reactors can ever go critical again, particularly unclear whether they can ever run at full power, and even if they could run at low power, it's unclear that they could run for very long. So we have a serious situation where there's been no nuclear generation in Southern California for the last half year, and reactors that have another 10 years in their license and were contemplating an additional 20 years that could get extended might not be able to limp along for more than a few months if they can limp along at all. On top of that, there's some really major safety concerns about San Onofre in particular, particularly, and I'll give you some for Diablo as well. The NRC has identified San Onofre as having a very troubled safety culture. They issued what's called a chilling effects letter, saying that the company has created an environment in which workers are frightened to bring forth safety complaints. In the last three years, each of the last three years, San Onofre has ranked number one in the nation for the number of safety complaints. Uh, the workers feel they can't bring those forward to the company, so they have to bring them forward to the NRC. Two or three examples of those troubles for you. It was revealed uh, a few years ago that for five years, hourly fire watches had not been done at the reactor and that the law for the fire watches had been fabricated. And yet the uh, company did not even find that for five years. The reason for the hourly fire watches is that there were orders given by NRC 30 years ago to fix fire vulnerabilities in Santa Murphy, very serious vulnerabilities. And 30 years later, they still haven't been fixed. Edison keeps missing the deadlines, it keeps asking for extensions, and says, in the meantime, we'll do hourly fire watches. For five years, they didn't do the hourly fire watches. For four years, the, back, the uh, backup diesel generators did not have the batteries appropriately attached. Backup diesels are extraordinarily important. Just two weeks ago, Edison discovered that for 30 years, they'd had an automatic shutoff device in the backup diesel generators that would shut the diesels off due to vibration. And someone asked the question, well, won't we have vibration in an earthquake, which is when you need the diesels? So the diesels would shut down, apparently, at precisely the moment you most needed them. Uh, and that had been there for 30 years. It's a troubled facility, eight and a half million people within 50 miles, um, major earthquake faults. The California Energy Commission says that the faults appear to be more capable than the reactor was designed for initially. And you all remember um, your late resident David Brower's definition of a nuclear reactor. It's a complex technological device for locating earthquake faults in California. <laughs> and it has been particularly true for San Onofre and for Diablo. So let's talk about Diablo for a moment. Um, in around 1970, during the construction permit phase, the local group wanted to put on evidence about an offshore earthquake fault. And uh, PG&E and the Atomic Energy Commission refused to permit it. Tom Pickford, the late uh, chair of nuclear engineering here at Berkeley, was on that panel. He dissented and said, what harm can it be? We ought to find out if there's an earthquake fault before we pour concrete. He was overruled. They built the reactor. And a few years later, they found an offshore fault and had to increase the cost of the reactor from a few hundred million to something in the order of four or five billion dollars. And then they put in the upgrades in the wrong locations because they had used the wrong blueprints. You may remember, you know, one was built to unit to reverse uh, blueprints of unit two. And that ended up costing huge amounts of money. They've now discovered a new fault called the Shoreline Fault that apparently uh, may intersect with the Hosbury and may therefore create an even larger earthquake risk. So the bottom line is whatever you think about nuclear power generally, the situation in California is really unique. We have a reactor in Southern California that's falling apart. So the steam generators are degrading in just a year or two, um, and it's unclear that they could ever be restarted safely. And Diablo um, has a long history example, one more example for Diablo. For four years, key components of the emergency core cooling system were disabled without them realizing it for four years. So bottom line, uh, these particular reactors are troubled. If there were an accident at them, they have each of the reactors, the two per unit, have um, a thousand times the long life radioactivity of the Hiroshima bomb and the spent fuel pools 
10 times now. So I think it's very reasonable to urge this state to rapidly move toward the phase out of those reactors and a transition to renewables. And in particular, uh, events have changed since the original resolution was drafted. And I think that it would be reasonable for the uh, council to consider a slight modification to the resolution to urge that San Onofre stay shut down. It's been down for half a year. It doesn't appear to be safe to come back up and that there be a rapid um, transition for deallocating into renewables. And if you want, I brought some sample language for one passage that you might have. Thank you. Sure. sure. Um, yeah, that's okay. Governor Brown should exercise the power mm -hmm. to direct the PUC, the California Public Utilities Commission, to call for replacing. <coughs> you can call them, but they can't require them to, to do that. Uh, he appoints, um, I don't remember if it is all, or at least a, a, a singular number of the PUC members. And yeah, uh, his points from that's right. Well, he's appointed, um, he's reappointed 22. He reappointed TV and. Right. But, he is very influential with the PUC, and frankly, a phone call to PV would not be um, a minor matter. The question was, what three calls could he make that would make a difference? But, but he can't, he can't the, require them. He can't require them. But doesn't it say call of them? Direct them to uh, call for replacement. I think he needs to change that. He can't direct, but he can certainly call on them to do so. Yeah, yeah. Call on them. And of course, he's, he's um, when he was governor the first time around, he, there were talks of building all these new nuclear power plants, and he said, no, we're not going to do that. And they threatened brownouts and all these rolling things, and he moved towards uh, doing you know, solar power and other kinds of things. So he's actually very good on this issue, so it's good to, good to get this good. Mr. Mayor, he had, you're quite right. He had um, uh, intervened on behalf of the state of California opposing the licensing in the first place of Diablo Canyon. So I think it would be reasonable to remind him of that past and to urge him to take the steps now. Let me make one quick point. Safety is generally preempted, it's generally a federal matter, but there's a famous court case, PG&E versus the California Energy Commission, the Supreme Court ruled that the state has wide authority over economics, reliability, and so on. And so under that authority, the governor can and the PUC and the Energy Commission and other state agencies can have a major effect saying that this doesn't make sense to have these unreliable sources. So just remind me, what happened to SMUD? What happened to the Energy Commission government? The public in uh, Sacramento voted to decommission the Rancho Seca reactor. And they succeeded in shutting it down and replacing its power with efficiency, uh, conservation, and renewables. In Sacramento, the last I saw, the lights were still on. <laughs> Not on the couch. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Let's see. Uh, I have several people on the queue. Are there any other questions? No, she has a public comment. Yeah, right now we're going to do that. Okay, public comment. There's probably going to be more than 10 of you, unfortunately, so we're going to leave you guys for a minute. You can yield up to four minutes, as you know. Good evening. My name is Jackie Cabasso. I'm the executive director of the Western States Legal Foundation. In 1976, I went door to door collecting signatures on the Nuclear Safeguards Ballot Initiative, which passed prohibiting the construction of any new nuclear power plants in California until a permanent solution can be found to the problem of safe disposition of highly radioactive spent fuel. That problem is no closer to being solved than it was in 1976. Unfortunately, the law is still on the books. Now, in the aftermath of the continuing nuclear disaster at Fukushima, it's time to take the next step. In fact, it's urgent. It's time to shut down and decommission California's aging, leaking Diablo Canyon and San Onofre nuclear power plants before the inevitable earthquakes strike and replace them with clean, renewable, decentralized, non-nuclear, non-fossil sources of energy. In May of last year, two months after the beginning of the ongoing Fukushima nightmare, I was at the United Nations in New York with a small group of... I was at, 
I was at the UN in New York with a small group of Japanese atomic bomb survivors. One of them commented, in 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on Japan. Now we've done it to ourselves. There's nothing good about nuclear power, and unfortunately, I don't have time to run down the litany, but I will say this. We don't need nuclear power in California or the rest of the world. A landmark report published last spring by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the United Nations body of the world's leading climate change scientists, concluded that renewable energy could account for almost 80% of the world's energy support within four decades if governments apply themselves, if there is the political will, and that is our job to create the political will. What happens in California has ripple effects across the country and around the world. California has an opportunity to lead by example by renouncing nuclear power and making the shift to clean, renewable, sustainable energy. That's why it is important and right that the Berkeley City Council tonight adopts the resolution. Before us. Thank you very much. Pull the microphone down. Thank you. Mayor and city council members, one in five nuclear plants in this country were closed before their licenses expired. We're not asking for anything that hasn't happened a lot already when we say San Onofre and Diablo Canyon prove they deserve to be shut as well. These facilities should never have been built. Nuclear plants on earthquake fault lines, what were they thinking? Most sober minds agree about this, but PG&E is so not worried, they haven't bothered to reassess seismic hazards in decades. Katrina taught us evacuations aren't just local matters. Californians care deeply about health, food, and environmental contamination. So imagine how many would head this way if there were an accident. If you think you have budget concerns now, <laughs> consider what would happen if the Bay Area became a nuclear free zone, I, I mean a nuclear refugee zone, sorry. You think Berkeley has a homeless problem now. Imagine getting overcome with an influx of radioactive Republicans fleeing Southern California. <laughs> but those Republicans are waking up to what Wall Street has known for years. The nuclear industry is not financially viable without huge, unfair subsidies. Americans don't want to bail out another troubled industry. We can't afford a Fukushima in California. Taxpayers would bear the burden. It could destroy California's businesses and farmlands, the nation's breadbasket, as well as Berkeley's gourmet ghetto. <laughs> Radiation is not organic. Let's stop adding to the radioactive burden we've been putting on future so, generations. Uh, you can have another minute. Thank you very much. Let's stop adding to the radioactive burden we're putting on future generations who must safeguard it forever. The nuclear industry can never overcome human fallibility. We don't need these plants. Safe, clean, renewable options are available now. That's where smart investors are putting their money. That's where we should put ours. Germany quit nukes right after Fukushima, and they got running solar power stunningly. If they can do it in Germany, imagine what we can do in sunny California. Thank you. Hello, I'm Louise Dunlap. I grew up in Berkeley and went to school here and then went away for 45 years, and now I'm back. And one of my first actions was to um, organize a, help organize a peace walk from Diablo Canyon to the Bay Area. We walked the land uh, last fall. And we had with us a number of Japanese people, including two refugees from the Fukushima area, who would tell their stories. We talked to people along the way. We mainly, we walked through the beautiful farmland that exists between there and here. And I have here, which you can't see too well, a, ma a map showing the um, 
circles of influence around the two nuclear plants. And uh, all of that would be destroyed. We would have a lot more than Donna just told you about. And I think that this city has a wonderful opportunity to say no. Thank you. Oh, I, I only, I think you should keep your minute. But she's yielding back to you. <laughs> I'm yielding back, yeah. I defer my time to Phyllis if she needs it. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Phyllis Olin, and I'm president of the board of Western States Legal Foundation, and a resident of Berkeley with my husband since the 60s. Um, and I also sent you um, an email, which I think all the board members got, um, about supporting this resolution. I just wanted to say that the conver some of the conversation that the council had previously uh, made me very proud to be in Berkeley, and that was that there was a sense of looking at a greater depth, a connection to the rest of the country that we have in Berkeley. And I think it's very important to bear that in mind when we talk about an issue like nuclear power. Um, whether Governor Brown has the will that he used to have or not, whether he has the power that um, to, to shut down nuclear power plants, I don't think is the issue. I think the issue is we as a community have to take a stand and say, this is not right. Um, when, when we read the newspapers, we see that uh, Japan, oh, Japan is starting up nuclear power plants again. But we have to remember that before the accident at, at Fukushima, um, there were 54 nuclear power plants in Japan. Now what's happening is that um, they're poised to overtake Italy, actually, and become the world's second biggest market for solar power, as incentives um, starting July 1st propel sales. And it's thought that Japan could eventually top Germany, which holds the number one spot for solar power. That was reported in the New York Times yesterday. So um, I don't think we should, we should think, oh, Japan is going to nuclear power. Let's do it now. It's OK. It's not OK. Thank you. Good evening, council members. Uh, some of you uh, may know me from uh, the 1990s. My name is Barbara George. I have an organization called Women's Energy Matters, and I was on the Berkeley Energy Commission uh, for several years in the, in the 1990s. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to say that I went on from there to work in, uh, I, I moved to Marin, and I'm, I've been supporting Marin Clean Energy, uh, which is our first uh, CCA in the state, uh, community choice aggregator. And we are offering 27% renewable, certified renewable energy to our customers with no nuclear power contracts in that mix. Um, we are, um, I, I have also, um, since um, the year 2001, uh, been a watchdog uh, rapier advocate at the California Public Utilities Commission. And I specialized in energy efficiency proceedings as well as the procurement proceedings. Um, and. In uh, the procurement proceeding uh, last year after Fukushima, I proposed. I'm sorry, you need another minute. I'll yield a minute. Okay. Thank you. Um, I proposed for um, nuclear power to be, um, to, for us to create a plan for how to replace nuclear power just in case it shut down um, at a point where we were had the summer coming on. And so now that has actually happened. Um, I'd like to tell you that the California situation is that we have 56% more energy than we need um, statewide. In the local areas, there's a slight um, you know, differences in different parts of the area, but the California grid operator says that San, the um, uh, LA area only needs 240 megawatts with the San Onofre shut down, and the um, San Diego area only needs 340 megawatts, so that's far less than the 2,200 megawatts of that power plant. Um, they're completely irrelevant. And that's true through 2020. We have 56% um, um, more than we need in, in 2020. So one of the good things that the procurement proceeding has done is to look, um, say that they're going to look this year at closing down 
the REACT was by 2015. Um, and I can give a minute. I give a minute to. Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, Southern California Edison actually has $450 million left in their energy efficiency fund uh, this year. They're supposed to spend, this is a three-year program, they're supposed to um, spend all that money by the end of this year. And they, have, they still had $450 million set of PG&E. Um, as of the end of April. So there's plenty of um, uh, money available, already appropriated for um, things like replacement of um, air conditioning in, in the local area, which is what drives the peak power. Um, and I had a meeting with the California Independent System Operator and he said that, you know, if we saved energy efficiency, uh, if we saved energy, uh, we could save, you know, if we replace all those air conditioners, we could save 30% of the um, peak load, and that would mean that we wouldn't even need the, the voltage support which the um, reactor op offers, and, and so we could close down the old gas plant that's running down there. So there's a lot of things that we can do, and uh, there's a lot of people who are ready to step up and do it, and uh, I think it, it's just a wonderful day that Sandman Operate is not, not operating anymore. Um, I wouldn't say anything if you're going to vote yes to kill us. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm going to give you some facts. Uh, first one, on July 26, and last year, CEC chairman asked a, a USGS expert directly, do you think the California reactors can withstand the maximum credible earthquake possible in the state? And that expert said, we don't know. That was one of the two experts that completely contrary to what you've heard in the media. This is very different. I'm going to throw some other facts at you. Uh, essentially, in 2008, the CEC evaluated the amount of money they've given PG&E for Diablo Canyon at roughly $34 billion for the previous 20 years. They don't know whether that's a profit or a negative. They have no idea because we, we can't investigate properly to really know what they're making. We know that PG&E for the last four years has not paid any federal taxes whatsoever. We also know that for... <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do uh, a couple other factoids. A couple other factoids. Department of Energy, Environmental Management Department actually estimates that they will have to spend between 270 and 330 billion dollars in the next 50 years to clean up nuclear waste in this country. There is a 16 million ton tailing site right off the side of the Colorado River. They're fixed that they're working on right now, 16 million tons of uranium, uranium tailings. That they're working on, it'll take nine years to clean up at a cost of $1 billion. There is another facility in New York that'll cost $34 billion to clean up if they don't spend $10 billion that will contaminate Erie, Lake Erie. It's the only reprocessing facility in this country that was shut down in 1977 by Carter. So contaminated. Estimates are $40 billion to clean up uranium tailings in this country. That's low-level waste. That's low-level waste contamination in this country. 1991... I yield my minute. Thank you. Oh, wait, who's going to yield it? I'm sorry. In 1991, the uranium industry collapsed in this country, leaving tailings all over the United States, mostly on Native American lands. Those tailings have not been cleaned up. They're still being left. They're contaminating... Native American properties, primarily in the Southwest. This is not just happening here, it's going on all over the world, in Canada, Africa, Asia, you name it, even in parts of Europe. There are tailings that are not being cleaned up by these industries, and in fact, forcing the public to pay for these costs. These are not small costs, we will shoulder them. One last issue, Yucca Mountain, 20 years, $100 billion, Obama canceled it. Why politics? You need to look closer. You wouldn't know what happened unless you were a real estate agent anywhere in Nevada. Property value, if you have high level waste going by your house every day, six, six truckloads a day, Las Vegas went no on nuclear waste. That's what happened. Their real estate values were just going to collapse. You wouldn't hear that outside of Nevada. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Joan Lohman. 
I walked with the folks who went from Diablo Canyon to Glen Cove here a few months ago as a protester. Um, I was arrested in, I believe, 1979 or 80, trying to stop Diablo Canyon from going online. And I want to stand here tonight to represent a dear friend of mine, Joanna Macy, who spoke earlier, and it's a pretty late hour for her to be out. So she was speaking to us out there saying that we have a moment right now in our history to make a choice. And Fukushima is really the wake-up call. If we don't hear it, it's really a very sad day for the planet. It may seem um, a small thing for the city of Berkeley to come through with this resolution, but it united with all the other cities all over our country who are looking at this. Radiation creates a planetary community. Council members, folks. I'm David Spooley. I grew up in Berkeley. And one of the most critical things for me in all my life here is the circle of concern. I assume that most people know about the circle of concern at the entrance of the campus, where every Thursday at 12 o'clock and Sunday at 1 o'clock uh, every uh, week. And that's 30 years where the, our statement is saying that the university is not the place for nuclear weapons and powers for a, a students, people growing up in the world. And this, and what we're facing right here now, we're hoping that the city here will also make a great change for the state of California to remove nuclear power out of our state and start right here in our town. So thank you. Hello, thank you for letting me speak. My name is Don Eichelberger. Um, I, uh, a little over 30 years ago, um, I joined just about six months after Three Mile Island uh, put nuclear power on most of our agendas for the first time. I joined a, what would become a 38 day sit in at Governor Jerry Brown's office, the first time he was mayor, calling on him to use his emergency powers to shut down. Rancho Seco, which was, and is, was, I guess now, a twin of Three Mile Island and subject to all the same problems that we were seeing. He refused at that point to do that, um, and to, refu to, to turn it down. Thankfully, the people of San Francisco, Sacramento voted right to do it. I would maybe say for this uh, group to also write a letter to uh, die, uh, ba Barbara Boxer calling on her to do an economic study of nuclear power and specifically of, of San Onofre. Thank you. Good evening all. Please uh, pass this resolution and close the nuclear power plants. I yield the remainder of my time to Cecil Pineda. I'm Cecil Pineda. I participated in the meetings of Nuclear Free California from December 5th. I can't imagine why we're even discussing this issue. Because at stake is not just the city of Berkeley, nor is it just the state of California, nor is it just the state of the United States. It is the state of this planet if you love the earth, you understand. I don't want to say anything more. Thank you. Um, we have the, the issue is now back before the council. Um, I think some of the council members have been working diligently on some changes to the small changes you want to do on them? Well, actually, the council member Worthington drafted most of them. Has he not yet? He's not. Oh, here he comes. I wanted to, uh, oh, there's a cue. Go ahead. There's a cue. So, Worthington, and then, I'm sorry, and then, and then, yeah. I want to make some <coughs> general art, or general remarks about nuclear power and, um, 
climate change, and whereas there is an argument for nuclear power and grand scheme of things. The first thing I would say is uh, it's it's not correct to say that uh, radiation isn't organic. The way you tell the difference between something that's organic uh, is to look at for carbon-14, which is radioactive. Plastics don't have any carbon-14 because the material has been buried for over a million years and the carbon-14 has decayed away. The Earth is also radioactive. It was much more radioactive four or five million years ago than it is now, and our bodies are also radioactive. So we live with radiation. Certainly large amounts are, are dangerous, and one has to be very careful with it. So I want to say also that all reactors and all earthquakes are not the same. Um, Fukushima was a boiling water reactor. It sent all three ones and uh, died with Canyon, my understanding, are pressurized water reactors. The other is the type of uh, earthquakes in Japan are um, subduction earthquakes, which are much more likely to generate or gen often generate tsunamis because they involve you know, a shift or change in the seafloor. The California earthquakes tend to be slip faults. They, the plates slide sideways, and so you don't change the level of the C4, and they're not generally associated with tsunami. So all earthquakes are not the same. To say that, um, you know, because there was an earthquake in Japan, in fact, the reactors you know, survived the earthquake fund. They didn't survive the tsunami. And one of the problems was they were located at very low elevation. And there's a difference between the Ottawa Canyon, which you should appreciate, and San Onofre. San Onofre is at relatively low elevation. I passed this diagram out. It's at 35 feet. The Diablo Canyon is 85 feet above the sea level, which is above essentially any uh, uh, tsunami one can probably imagine. But evaluating whether you know, a, a reactor can survive whether there's going to be a tsunami, an earthquake, or magnitude, could, could damage reactors is a very complicated technical problem. And I have an objection that we only have one commission that's weighted on this. It's not a technical commission. We should have asked our energy commission and our environmental commission, which have jurisdictions, and they should have convened some experts to give testimonies. Because this is a very important question, and let me tell you why it's important. No uh, electrical generation system is pain-free or doesn't cause any problems with the environment. Uh, people say, well, you go with wind. You put up lots of windmills and they kill birds and people don't like them because they, you know, they, uh, they change the aesthetics. Uh, there's problems with large solar arrays. The other problem is there's a difference between uh, there are carbon-based fuels, which are mostly what we use to generate electrical power now, and there are carbon-free fuels. And the carbon-free ones are hydropower, nuclear, wind, and solar. Wind and solar are relatively small at the moment. They're growing rapidly, but they're also intermittent. It depends on when the sun shines and when the wind blows, and they're typically not used for baseline power, which coal and oil, uh, coal, oil, and, and nuclear. Nuclear is the only one with baseline power that's typically used that's carbon free. If you're going to phase it all out, and you can do it, it's going to, and, and what's happened in Japan, is, as someone has said, they haven't been using the reactors for the last you know, number of months, is they've increased their fossil fuel emissions or their greenhouse gas emissions by over a quarter, over 25%. So uh, there are consequences to your decisions. You can't get it all on efficiency. Uh, and I think it has to be looked at carefully. One has to evaluate this, and let me give you, uh, you know, a couple of backups. Baseline generation capacity typically is 85% of electrical generating capacity. That has to be capacity that's steady. Solar is really great for air conditioning because it peaks during the daytime when your air conditioning will are high. It doesn't give you any power at night. So you need something that generates also power at night. Uh, wind, if photovoltaics, you just can't turn them on. You get power when you're there. You have to have a grid that's adaptable. You have to have a smart grid. And, uh, you know, they typically are used for peaking power, not, not providing baseline loads. Finally, I, I, I would, you know, refer again to the, the climate change issue. Berkeley, in the last 10 years, uh, we haven't met our climate change goals. We're 30% above where we projected we would be. We're 10% higher than when we started. The United States is a similar method. We're not 
decreasing that greenhouse gas emission. We're increasing it. Uh, the latency of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere is like 100 years. Once you put it in there, it doesn't come out. It takes a long time. We got too much in there already. Some people refer to clean renewable energies. Bio-based you know, renewable fuels are not clean. They generate a lot of greenhouse gas emission, more than that gets taken out by the plants. If you burn all the forests there are in the world right now, you're going to have a massive increase in CO2. It's just burning biofuels. It's not to solve your problem. You need carbon free sources of electricity. Nuclear power is not carbon free. There's studies. Please, sir. sir let, let me finish. We're currently, in, in, in terms of our climate, in a Goldilocks position. I mean, for the last tens of millions of years, it's either been too cold or it's been about right. And you go back 50 more million years ago, it's too hot. Okay? And, and, we're in this unusual position where we have lots of glaciers and ice age where it's too cold. When it warms up some, like we're in now in the interstitial uh, climate period, the last 10,000 years, the, you know, some of the continental glaciers melt, the, you know, the northern hemisphere, but Antarctica and Greenland don't. And there's a danger if we keep increasing the number of CO2 emissions, you'll go past that tipping point, and the Greenland glaciers and the Antarctic glaciers will go. And then it won't be Goldilocks anymore. And the ocean won't be where it is now. It will be 100 feet or more higher. And you know, uh, if you get rid of a carbon-free source of nuclear power, and it's generating electricity now that's not generating, you know, not emitting any CO2 into the atmosphere, and replace it even with renewables that generate, you know, that are emitting CO2s, you're going to make the greenhouse gas emissions much worse. So this should be studied carefully. We should look. We should. Uh, See if you can come up with a phasing plan that makes sense for California. It depends on our mix. We have a fair amount of actually uh, carbon-free energy in nuclear and actually hydro. But, um, and you could make it a lot worse by putting a lot of mules in there that put a lot more CO2 in the atmosphere. Councilman Moore. I'd like to move the item with the amendments that have been proposed by Councilman Worthington and Mayo. And I would read them to the record if I could. Sure. So if, if if someone else could, no, I can't. I can't. Wow. Very <laughs> direct. <laughs> but I do want to move the items with the, uh, the amendments to the, uh, to the resolution. Okay, the one we call the Council of Mocking is here. Worthington can decide, decide for his language. I think they go out of order. Um, yeah, do Is that all right? Do you want a second question? Yeah. You can decide for it. Do you want a second question? It's all right. It's all right. Oh, yeah, I'll second. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, thank you. Um, and the the modifications are on page 41 in the sixth whereas um, we are deleting the words four times the amount of and putting the words more um, because one report that I read said three times more and one said four times more and I don't know who's right but everybody seems to agree that it's more than they're meant to hold uh, then on the final whereas, we're deleting the word ignore and saying insufficiently consider. On um, the third whereas, on the second page, 22, uh, we're deleting the words is now proposing to leave and replacing that with does not now have plans to prevent leaving highly radioactive waste at reactor sites for 300 years. Uh, then in the fifth uh, paragraph, uh, be it further resolved that Governor Brown be requested to do all he can to influence the CPUC. Um, and then in the next resolved, uh, the uh, city... Right, thank you. Um, and then in the next, should make, yes, his desire, yes, thank you. Uh, and then the next resolved, uh, we're deleting the words calls upon Joey Brown and replace that with the word urges and then deleting to exercise his powers to direct and saying call upon the CPUC um, and then in the uh, further resolve the last one on the page uh, add after seismic issues economic issues and, and uh, off-site permanent storage issues are resolved so those are the amendments um, and then um, I just wanted to also comment 
that Environment California uh, is, you know, a pretty expert environmental group. They have a detailed, if you look, if you go to their website, they have an incredibly detailed analysis specifically of these two particular plants in California. And they say a Fukushima is, uh, could happen in California in these two locations. So Environment California is very definitive. CalPerg, another major environmental <coughs> consumer group, specifically has uh, lobbied the CPUC uh, in similar policy for what we're proposing here. The Natural Resources Defense Council uh, has policies specifically applicable to this situation, although not naming <coughs> these particular plants. Uh, I mean, the list of environmental groups that have taken stance on this is lengthy and impressive. And I think it behooves us to listen to those environmental experts uh, and move forward ourselves. Uh, right. Thank you. Well, obviously, uh, I second the, uh, uh, the resolution and I intend to support it. Uh, but I think there is um, a cautionary note in Council Member Wazniak's um, remarks. Um, you know, uh, about 20 to 30 percent of the commercials on TV now are coal and gas industry. They have inundated the airways with slick commercials and attaching themselves to the education of young science students in high school and so forth. And uh, they're not doing that for their health. I mean, uh, uh, the uh, the prevalence of nuclear power now um, that uh, fuels most of our energy needs um, needs to be phased out in a way, as a responsible way, so it's not replaced by coal and gas. Uh, because uh, we know uh, what CO2 emissions mean for the atmosphere and the Earth. So uh, what, what we need to do is couple this uh, effort uh, with strong, strong uh, demands for uh, clean en energy production, uh, wind, solar, what have you. And uh, the energy industry, just like the banking industry and the healthcare industry, is controlled by a cabal of profiteering folks that uh, have no intention, uh, even at the expense of destroying the earth of abandoning their, their, their drive for profits. And uh, yeah. if we don't counter that with a massive will of popular demand uh, for changes in our energy uh, production and changes in our consumption, uh, we're, 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 we're not uh, engaging this thing fully. Uh, just uh, condemning nuclear energy is not the, uh, the entire answer to this. And uh, so uh, let's not walk away thinking we have, we've got some great victory here. Unless we can force uh, our federal government and our economic system to abandon some of these more dangerous uh, energy uh, production sources, uh, we're just delaying uh, something that uh, will overtake us inevitably. I just want to say that I appreciate that it's a very complex issue and how we use energy is very complex. But frankly, I don't think it's our job to um, sit and weigh this against that against this. It's our job to have a strong voice because the energy industry has a tremendously strong voice. They have a huge lobby. They can keep, I mean, look at what the fight that they put up when Marin wanted to go to community choice aggregation. They just poured money into that. So to actually let our voices be heard, now even though the Fukushima earthquake conditions are different than those in California, if we have a major seismic event, other things could happen. It might not be flooding, but we're very vulnerable there on that coast. We don't even know how vulnerable we are, actually. Um, so I think it's especially important to weigh in on these worn and deteriorated uh, facilities. 
we just have to be heard, and this is a very good start. So we'll When you do this, you know, in a hurry, it's real easy. Um, in the sixth paragraph of page 42, um, where we changed it to say, Jerry Brown, the governor of the state of California, call upon the California Public Utilities Commission to call for replacing. I'd like to uh, edit that to say, call upon the California Public Utilities Commission to replace aging reactors with clean and renewable energy. Good. Well, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, this is an important issue, and we're glad that we're going to be able to take a position. I think also we're watching that raise some good points, but I think the overriding good is certainly there. Uh, I fought against San Onofre. I fought against the you know, Canyon, Rancho Seco. I mean, I think you know, on the, on the gist of it, just to think about the waste and what's going to happen to the waste alone. As Jesus said, it's not a good deal. We shouldn't be involved. We shouldn't be investing. In so please call the roll on the motion. We'd like to have everybody have a chance to speak. The amendment, you guys are okay with the amendment? With the amendment to Susan May. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, call the roll. Councilmember Maya? Yes. Moore? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Irene? Yes. Capitelli? Yes. Lundgraf? Yes. Worthington? Yes. Wozniak? No. Uh, Mayor Bates? No. Okay, it passes. All right.